Hi there. Um, I'm Zara Peskett and I am a secondary school teacher at a large comprehensive in Milton Keynes called Shenley Brookend School uh, that is also more widely part of the Five Dimensions Trust. So I'm going to share with you today my five quick and hopefully practical tips uh, for questioning on online learning. Um, so that live lesson where you've got students in real time able to answer your questions. Uh, so my first questioning top tip is to plan by question. It uh, might seem an obvious one and it's definitely something I did long ago in my NQT year, but I found now that we've moved to remote learning, planning by question is really important. So asking myself, what is the one question that I can ask that students can really show they know? Um, I found that I'm asking a lot more questions in live lessons to try and encourage engagement and to constantly assess in real time where students are. So having that list of questions before a lesson has been really helpful. The questions that I'd like answers to, um, ensuring that they are a range of questions and even thinking about which students I would like to answer which questions based on my previous assessment and planning. Uh, so my second top tip for questioning in live lessons is to use the chat box more effectively. Um, whatever platform you're using will have a chat function or a comment section uh, for you to kind of gauge students' knowledge. And students, in my experience, seem to be more comfortable using this than turning their microphones on. It seems as quite a space, you know, safe space. And I've even had students who wouldn't normally contribute that much in lessons being able to really take kind of ownership of that chat box. However, I found the chat box that there is the um, the fastest finger first phenomenon. So you ask a question and the quickest student to type gives an answer and then everybody else kind of sits back and thinks, oh, well, she's got her answer now or they type the same thing as the previous person. So I've been using a command word for my chat box. Um, so saying, OK, until I say go, I don't want anybody to send their answers. So posing a question having that wait time, that all important wait time where they type an answer and then sending go. So I get all the responses at once and I'm able to see the individual responses rather than students just maybe copying what the person above them had written. Having that command word really creates a kind of sense of competition like go, send your answer. Um, but it also allows our students who are maybe less digitally literate to have that wait time where they're typing, where they're not always the last to answer. So everybody gets that same that same input. So my third tip uh, is based around oracy. Now, um, as a secondary school teacher, I have found that quite a lot of students are quite shy about having their microphones on. So I've been making sure I have starter activities that really encourage students to turn their mics on engage. So that might be a really silly discussion topic around kind of which Disney character would you be if you were in this story, but something to try and get them to get their microphones on and talking because once they've unmiked for the first time, they're more comfortable doing so throughout the lesson. I appreciate not all students can unmic either because of technical issues or because of noisy households, but I really find that kind of microphone on dialogue really helpful um, and making sure when you're doing that you're not just kind of putting a question into the the abyss so when you're kind of asking questions by microphone by oracy online picking students um you know sally what do you think um jonathan what would you say nadim how could you add to that um and students really being aware at the start of the lesson that that's an expectation. It sounds a really simple thing, but I start all my lessons by saying you are going to have your microphones on today. So if you can try and unmic for this starter activity, just creating a bit of environment in the room uh, for students to have those microphones on. So my fourth top tip is a bit of an old one, uh, but is very relevant to online lessons. So really thinking about the level of questioning, I kind of found myself reflecting two or three weeks into this online process where we were delivering live lessons and realizing a lot of my questions were quite low order, kind of knowledge based questions. Um, I think it's because I was trying to increase the pace of the lessons. I wanted them to be snappy and engaged and for them to know they were there. So I was asking lots of questions but in the majority they were pretty lower order because for you to have those analyze and create and evaluate questions you really need students to be able to structure their answers 
What I found really helpful is using resources and oracy tools that give students sentence starters. So if I'm going to be having a questioning session, having on the screen a couple of things like I agree with this because or something I can add that I know about this is just so when you're asking students what they think, they've got that sentence starter to break that silence to start talking um, and just offering them some scaffolding. Really, uh, we've been recording all our live lessons for safeguarding purposes, and I think when students get that little banner across the top that says you are being recorded, um, it sometimes makes them quite shy. So making sure that I've got those higher order questions, um, those analyze, those create, those think questions and having the sentence starters there to support those students in using those. Um, my fifth one has actually become my most used uh, questioning technique over the last couple of weeks and a little while. Um, and it's about now that students are growing in confidence in online learning about what we call bouncing questions. So asking a student something and saying, Tom, tell me what you think about Marxism. I'm a sociology teacher. Um, Tom, tell me what you think about Marxism. And Sally, while you're listening to him, I want you to think about what the thing is that you agree with most about what he's saying. And then when Sally's talking, saying Nadim, can you please add in what you're going to say is a really important key term that Sally has used. And then the students have got the think time because while Sally's talking, Nadim's thinking but it also means that they're bouncing the questions between each other. So asking them if they agree with what's being said and really trying to replicate that in class dialogue, really. So that's my really simple and hopefully helpful five top tips uh, for questioning online. So plan by question, take that time to plan out what your key questions are gonna be to keep the lesson focused and to make sure you can engage students. So my advice would be, you know, what is the question you're gonna ask? that is the linchpin, the question that, you know, really shows they know and decides where you go next. And uh, number two, using the chat box really effectively, having that command word where they send all together. So you've not just got the quickest typer and making sure that you've got really good ground rules for that chat box and trying to get them in as, you know, writing in as much detail as possible. My third one on RSC, um, being careful not to just cold call students, call them by name and create in that environment where they've got that microphone on. So investing that time at the beginning of the lesson and engaging them in some dialogue they're interested in so that their mics are then, you know, good and ready to go later on in the lesson. Um, levels of questioning, um, my tip number four, making sure that you've got enough wait time for them to answer those higher order questions and enough resource structure and scaffolding online uh, to be able to use those. And then my fifth idea, uh, my fifth thing that is working really well right now for my secondary students is question bouncing. So asking one student something and while they are talking, asking another student how they're going to add, progress or move on from there. Um, with my older students that or my students that I've been doing this with more, they're starting to bounce so they can ask the follow up question. So really trying to ensure that the, the question doesn't just go from teacher to student, teacher to student ensuring that you've got that range of questioning where they're bouncing around to each other. Um, I hope those five tips are helpful. Um, thank you.